Hello and welcome to Guarantee RV's live stream. We call it uh, G Live because we're streaming to you live from Junction City, Oregon, every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, during uh, our live stream, we love to share industry tips, uh, service tips, uh, any new product innovations. Uh, in particular, we're here to promote the RV industry because we love it. And to answer any of your questions. So if you have any questions online today, don't hesitate to, to chime in with a, a question. We'll get it answered to the best of our abilities. My name is Marshall White. I'm the uh, marketing director for Guarantee Chevrolet and RV Super Centers. And I am joined today by a very special guest, uh, my friend and colleague, Jeff Johnston, the producer of Rolling On TV, a uh, nationally syndicated program that uh, uh, it does a fantastic job of promoting the RV industry and, and letting us all uh, know um, just how, how best to use our RVs and get, get the best uh, advantage out of our RVs that we possibly can. Jeff, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Ought to be fun. It, it is. Uh, we've got an action-packed agenda. Uh, we thought what we'd do first is, is honor our commitment to our viewers by uh, sharing a little bit about uh, the state of the RV industry and some hot industry news. Uh, what some viewers may find very interesting is that uh, the industry is growing at its fastest clip on, on you know, that's been recorded. Uh, that's in terms of how many RVs are being produced, which has uh, recently eclipsed the, the all-time manufacturing numbers. I think it's a half a million RVs that will be produced this year. Uh, and also the number of new RV registrations nationwide. In particular, uh, we're seeing a lot of RV registrations uh, in the Pacific North Northwest, aren't we, Jeff? Oh, yeah. This, uh, this area seems to be holding its own in the country as far as uh, sales and new vehicle deliveries. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, you've been in the industry for three deca decades. I mean, yeah, you, you, less, use, yeah. you use RVs quite often and you get to chat with a lot of industry insiders. I, I'm just kind of curious, Jeff, what do you think is behind this astonishing growth that we're seeing? Well, several things. Um, you know, for one, the, uh, the economy is a lot better now. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when the economy gets better, people can start thinking about buying things like RVs. And also uh, the fact that the manufacturers are paying a lot more attention these days to what customers really want and need. And in this case, uh, for example, the ultralights are playing a big part. And in general, they're just styling their vehicles and including components that make, uh, make them more attractive to people. That's a really good point. You know, I hadn't thought about how uh, much more approachable a lightweight RV is and just how it opens you know, RVing up to so many more people, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it means that you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money on a large three-quarter ton pickup or something to be able to tow an RV. You can, well, there's a, an awful lot of selections out there right now for small vehicles. You know, you can tow it with a family car, so to speak. Sure. I mean, typically SUVs or small pickups, minivans, and so on. But uh, there's a lot of trailers out there that can accommodate those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're probably seeing uh, a different type of consumer for some of these uh, RVs than maybe what's historically been the norm? Well, they... Uh, the industry has been trying to uh, be more approachable to younger buyers rather than the typical uh, baby boomer market, which is, uh, you know, certainly still there. They're building vehicles that are going to appeal to younger buyers, and they're doing that with graphics, cosmetics, you know, building a trailer that doesn't look like what your grandfather towed yeah. or your father. Yeah. Um, and including uh, features that just are more appealing to young people, a lot more electronics, you know, a lot more connectivity, for example. Sure. People sure. are are tied with a death grip to their electronic devices, <laughs> and now a lot <laughs> of their a, a, lot, a lot of their RVs have uh, the capability of interacting with that, and that's uh, you know just one more little piece of the puzzle to make it appealing. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we're sitting in a uh, Jayco, a brand new 2016 Jayco designer. Uh, fifth wheel that comes with a uh, what's something called a my command control center which is essentially a, it looks like an iPad and you can walk around and actuate oh probably six to twelve different uh, uh, functions on this trailer um, right from the remote uh, I, I mean we can we can adjust the mood lighting in here from the couch. We can adjust the jacks uh, from outside while we're looking for obstructions. Uh, there's all sorts of 
the awnings. There, there's a number of uh, functions that we'll be showing off on this designer here uh, with Jeff momentarily. Uh, but before I do, Jeff, you know, I'm going to I'm going to throw you a curveball because I skipped uh, my question of you about uh, a little bit about your background and uh, and rolling on TV. Could you share that with our viewers so they know a little well, bit more about you? Well, I've been a camping enthusiast my whole life mm -hmm. and an automotive journalist for my entire working career. And wow. uh, uh, I spent 18 years at Trailer Life and Magazine and Motorhome Magazine as the technical editor wow. and technical director. And I still am uh, the, one of the guys who does the RV clinic columns. So send in those RV clinic letters and questions. We need them. And, uh, um, and uh, about five years ago, I got together with Joe Moniz, who had a show called Boating Today TV. And we started uh, uh, rolling on TV all about mm -hmm. RVs. And, We've been going at it ever since, mm -hmm. and uh, the show is growing, and we're uh, expanding our reach nationwide mm -hmm. and uh, trying to cover the industry in a way that talks about interesting products but also tells people about why they might want to own that product right. and what they can do with it and what kind of fun they can have with it. That's what I love about the Rolling On TV show is that uh, uh, there's always something I hadn't considered in, in terms of how I can use my RV. I've been a long-time RVer myself, and... Uh, a lot of great ideas that come out of your show and, and features and tips. Well, we try. Yeah. We try to hit kind of a, a spectrum of everything from uh, destinations and interesting people and, and companies and, uh, and mm -hmm. products and so forth and safety tips. Mm -hmm. It's a really valuable resource to the RV industry. Again, it, it airs nationwide, probably up into Canada as well for that matter. Yeah, we are distributed in Canada. And uh, we have uh, distribution deals pending, so we're always expanding our reach. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. We're lucky to have you on, on air today for our viewers to ask any and all questions you might have about the RV industry. We'll do our best to, to answer them. My gosh, we've got, we've got a gentleman here who writes for uh, Trailer Live, Motorhome Magazine, you know, uh, produces Rolling on TV. So if, if we can't answer it, I'd be surprised uh, who could. Uh, the... Uh, uh, you know, jumping back in a little bit to the state of the RV industry and its uh, astonishing growth that we've been witnessing right here in Oregon, uh, I've been looking at 30% uh, increases year over year uh, for at least the last two years in a row. That's new RV registrations in the state of Oregon. And uh, we're, we're noticing a very similar trend nationwide. Um, production is up. Uh, I believe they're going to be producing about a half million RVs this year. Uh, you know, Jeff, we've talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, the manufacturers are doing a great job meeting uh, consumer needs, and that's a big reason why. But then there's also some uh, behind-the-scenes uh, sort of um, activities that maybe uh, – uh, folks haven't completely understood, one of which is bank lending terms. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, working at a dealership here, we're noticing that uh, lenders are, are being very generous uh, on terms and uh, really helping consumers get into uh, their first RV right now. Uh, you know, interest rates are, are certainly very low, historically low. Uh, that has opened up uh, the industry for this growth. Uh, well, of course, we hope it's sustainable for as long as possible. Well, all good things good. must come to an end, I suppose. That would be good for all of us keeping our jobs. <laughs> jobs are good. Uh, I know they love it in Elkhart, Indiana, where 80% of the nation's RVs are produced. Uh, they, uh, Elkhart is also having, they, they build so many and they're so busy right now, they're having a tough time finding enough workers. That's they're for sure. busing people in from surrounding towns because they can't keep their factories staffed. And there is a lot worse things than being too busy and too successful at a, with your company. Isn't that the truth? Great problem to have, we always like to say. And, and uh, they've started to look at uh, manufacturing locations out of, outside of Elkhart, of course. And uh, Junction City, Oregon is a beneficiary of that with Winnebago moving to town. Uh, we have covered that on live on our live stream uh, in the past. Uh, Mr. John Millis is their general, general manager here in uh, Junction City uh, that is currently assembling Class A uh, motorhomes at this very moment in Junction City. Uh, a lot of people would have never thought that uh, they would live, leave Forest, uh, Forest City, Iowa. Uh, so Yeah, that's a sort of a, 
seismic shift, <laughs> but a good one. I mean, it never hurts to diversify a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And certainly good for Junction City. I don't think there's going to be uh, any tsunamis in, in Indiana or Iowa anytime yeah. soon that, yeah. where they need to have a separate manufacturing base due to that. Mm -hmm. But w w definitely the workforce uh, issue is uh, trained, skilled manufacturers of RVs is uh, – uh, what what the concern is across industry, and that's why uh, we're starting to see the shift back to Junction City, where Country, Tro Country Coach, Monaco, and many others used to be manufactured years ago. Country Coach is coming back, by the way, which we're all very excited about. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. You get an iconic name in the industry like that. It's good to see them still alive and kicking and, mm -hmm. and resurrected. Another really cool uh, driver of the astonishing growth in the RV industry that we're hearing about is get low gas prices, huh? Well, yeah, you, when you can fill up for half or uh, uh, two-thirds of the price of what you could a year ago, that's, uh, that's certainly an inspiration. Mm -hmm. On the news, uh, PBS NewsHour last night, they said that uh, this Memorial Day, we will experience uh, uh, gas prices at their lowest level in 11 years. So uh, they said last year at this time, uh, gas nationwide was uh, something like 275 or 279 a gallon, and now it's down to two and a quarter on average this year. So that also opens up this industry, or you know, RVing to, to the masses as well, doesn't yeah. it? Oh yeah. Well, it just it, it even if you're only driving from uh, Junction City to the coast, for example, uh, for your average family towing a small trailer, uh, that's going to save them a fair amount of money and just make it possible maybe do we go or not this weekend. And Yeah, they can do. They can mm -hmm. afford it. Yeah, and that's really good. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, yeah, I, I suppose maybe the most obvious uh, reason we're seeing the, the growth in the RV industry these last several years, um, you know, following the, the economic uh, recession, is this dream of RVing, this, uh, the great outdoors, the, the time with family. Um, you get to work with so many uh, RVing families and friends, you know. How would you express the, the freedom uh, that RVing gives these families? Well, it's, um, it, it is probably one of the best ways to spend quality time out doing something with your family. Mm -hmm. uh, several of my relatives own RVs, and I have some uh, 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 very young uh, grand nieces who appear with us occasionally on the nice. show and will yeah. be coming up in the uh, Jay Feather segment that you'll see. Oh, yeah. Um, and there is just really nothing quite like the time that you spend out in a nice campground someplace out cooking together, doing these 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 you know multiple family operations mm -hmm. where you all have a big potluck dinner or something, and the and the kids sit around the fire, and then their irresponsible older uncle tells them all kinds of stories that have their <laughs> eyeballs slammed open because they're looking around the dark. And, uh, that's who sort might of thing. that but, irresponsible uh, uncle uh, be, Jeff? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's just a, a, a really terrific. Uh, affordable way to go out and spend that valuable bonding and family time. Mm -hmm. Well said. Uh, you know, I like to remind our viewers that uh, you're watching uh, G Live, guarantees live stream straight from Junction City, Oregon, where we air live every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We sure appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we appreciate uh, any and all questions that you might have. Feel free to chime in if uh, something catches your fancy. We're, uh, don't be shy. Uh, we're, uh, I, know, I know we look rather intimidating, you know, with, with our, you know, our, our glasses on, but, uh, but we, 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 uh, we're also happy to help in any way we can. Uh, We've been talking a lot about what's driving the astonishing growth of the RV market nationally and locally in Oregon. Uh, Jeff, there's about, uh, the, the industry measures the, what we in the marketing profession call penetration uh, in each state nationally. And it turns out that in the western states, uh, there's a higher per capita of ownership of RVs than in uh, any other segment of the nation. Why do you think that might be? Perhaps I'm a little bit uh, uh, prejudiced as a native Oregonian, but uh, we do have the best part of the country to, to live in and mm -hmm. spend recreation time in. Mm -hmm. um, we also, our economy has come back. Oregon, you know, with the 
the logging econ part of the economy always up and down, but the general economy has come back enough that people actually have money to spend. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and geographically, no matter where you live in Oregon, you're fairly close to some place that you can go and really enjoy. You know, you can, I mean, we're, we're what, uh, 70 miles from the coast here, roughly. Yeah. Uh, the mountains are close by, uh, the eastern Oregon deserts. You know, the, there's so many opportunities where you don't have to drive for half a day to get there. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference because if people can mm -hmm. own something and know that they can make relatively short trips, that encourages ownership and use. Uh, isn't that the truth? We, uh, we're, we're blessed to live in Oregon uh, right here in the southern Willamette Valley where uh, we have the ocean, the mountains, the, the high desert, and uh, you know what, I, what a lot of people refer to as a semi-temperate uh, rainforest <laughs> around us that's lush and green uh, throughout the year. Uh, so we, we, we are uh, very lucky to live here. Uh, I suppose I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that, um, uh, you know, we, we do love the uh, customers who have uh, chosen to, to uh, take on RVing as a lifestyle. So this is a big, uh, this is a big investment that families make and, and retirees make. And uh, obviously, uh, Jeff, our, our livelihoods are dependent on that. And we, uh, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't say thank you for, uh, con you know, trying, uh, 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 taking advantage of these great RVs and the freedom that they provide. Well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it is a, uh, uh, a fun profession to be involved in that, uh, you know, happens to be something that I enjoy doing. And in my case, uh, working in a job that involves recreation uh, it can't get much better than that. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, we invite anybody who doesn't own an RV to join us. And uh, it can be done affordably. And it can be a, uh, an avenue to living simply as well. Because if you do decide that uh, you want to uh, go full time in an RV, you know, you're, you're dealing with probably a couple hundred square foot of living space. And it's, it's very liberating to uh, let go of uh, many items that we hold on to in our lives that uh, mm. may not actually be used. <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, kind of transition over and talk a, a little bit about this beautiful Jayco Designer fifth wheel that has recently won uh, RV Business Magazine's uh, 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 top RV, RV debut for 2016. It also won RV uh, Pros uh, uh, Award for 2016. Um, uh, I think best, best of show and top RV, v, RV debut uh, both is a very remarkable achievement for, for any product. When I, when I look at both magazines, industry um, um, accolades this for 2016. This is one of only a very small handful of products that won both awards. And uh, that says a lot about this uh, Jayco designer, doesn't it, Jeff? Yeah, it does, but it's, uh, it, it's with good reason. It sure is. Uh, we picked this particular RV, and we're gonna we're actually gonna start walking around here momentarily and show you a little bit uh, around this beautiful, uh, luxurious RV. And uh, you know, Jeff, uh, what's the first thing that strikes you about this uh, this living space? Well, the headroom. As yeah. a person of some height, uh, I always tend to pay attention to the headroom, but I'm not going to bang my head into mm -hmm. something. This is definitely residential. I can't even touch the roof. Yeah, I think it's a, it looks like at least an eight-foot ceiling, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah, got a nice barrel roof. Uh, you know, what strikes me as well is, well, first off, it's nicer than my own living room by a long shot. <laughs> uh, but then also look at the cabinetry. Yeah, well, it's... it's <clears throat> The, the, it's a standard saying when you walk into an RV and say, gee, it looks like residential cabinetry. But, you know, there's different degrees of residential cabinetry. Mm -hmm. And this, this one looks fantastic. I mean, the dark wood tends to give it that lush, uh, sort of plush, luxury sort of feel. And the, uh, the cut glass doors uh, certainly, you know, add a, add a high-end touch. And this is not press board, is it? Uh, <laughs> this no, is, this, no, this is, is the real deal. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot to offer. Look at the size of this kitchen, Jeff. Yeah, my this is the the spot obviously that my wife always hones in on, mm -hmm. and uh, um, 
and <clears throat> having the, the traditional or the becoming traditional island kitchen is certainly a nice touch. I mean, it's something that we're seeing in a lot more RVs these mm -hmm. days. As manufacturers have figured out what else they can do with slide outs besides install them, and now they're actually using the space available, this is one of the things that's become, of course, really popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how, how uh, is this a full wall slide? Oh, uh, uh, viewers, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Don Mazziotti, my colleague and friend here in Hi, Fifth folks. Wheel Sales. Uh, Don has a ton of experience with Fifth Wheels as well as Jeff, and so we're lucky to have both of you with us. Uh, is it a full wall, wall slide, uh, Don? Actually, it's got five slides in it. It's Holy got one way. upstairs in the bedroom and then four down here. Oh, wow. What's the what's the dry weight on this bad boy? Um, it's probably pushing somewhere around 13, maybe even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for, I, it was a trick question. I, I, yes. It's a 17995. I apologize. I, I, I had to look it up myself. When that's, you, the when you said, that's the gross. Yeah. That's yeah. The, oh, sorry, yeah, the gross. The unloaded weight is a little less than that, but it's is allowed it? to have as much as. So. Is it? own a big truck when you tow it is the yeah. big bottom truck line. Yeah. yeah and what triggered that thought is the five slides which give us all the comforts and the livability but do come with some weight <laughs> uh, what else uh, catches your eye about this either of you well uh, typically you know you have the, the solid surface countertops which has made a significant difference in adding that residential feel for the for the kitchen area mm -hmm. and uh, that is a the, deep the, deep sink yeah, the gig sink is amazing. Yeah, gigantic stainless steel sink, and uh, having a faucet that, it's a small detail, but having a faucet that comes out far enough that the water doesn't dump in right at the edge of the sink is a big deal. I, I hear this from uh, people using kitchens all the time, mm. and just having a, a sink that is realistically large enough to use instead of the little, you know, the, the tinier sinks that you see in some vehicles that are ne necessary due to the size of the rig. But this sort of feature uh, uh, is, a, is a huge advantage for people who are enthusiastic chefs, especially. Yeah, easy, easy to clean, too. Not a scratch on the stainless steel. I love it. Yep. It's also got a dishwasher in it. Yep, having a... Uh, oops. Check that right. out. Yeah, that's, that's well, very that nice. Well, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love it. Well, I can think of uh, at least one... One uh, uh, cook counterpart who would appreciate that. <laughs> and, having, and having an induction uh, stovetop, that's a uh, very much residential feature that uh, if you've got one at home and you're used to cooking with that, you're going to be accustomed to using this sort of a feature. So easy to clean, uh, makes clean up a snap. Yeah. And then a convection oven. Yeah, and a gigantic that size microwave. Residential size, yeah. yeah it's that, huge. Uh, you can actually... <laughs> put a, probably put a smallish turkey in there as long as you trim the legs <laughs> off so they don't bang into the sides as it's turning around. Look at all the the, the uh, storage space too. Yeah, it just keeps going. This, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And these doors are nice and heavy too with the residential hinges. And with Murphy's Law, the vacuum, of course, uh, if you got space like that, you'll find something to put in there. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It also has the new Polar Max uh, 18 cubic foot refrigerator. Yeah, the large oh. double door fridge. That's as big Very as you're nice going to find in an RV, darn near, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, 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 it won't take a lot, a lot of uh, adjustment to make the move from the fridge you have at home to using this one. Oh, okay. I mean, it isn't like you're going to have to downsize a whole bunch to be able to use this fridge. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, The little things that... Um, they use it's even got a power supply here on the on the top of the counter, which I absolutely love. You can plug your you can plug your phones in when you come in. It's got them over there on that wall too, along with the tablet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the My Command uh, control center here. Uh, I suppose we can pull the if I oh it's plugged in. Uh, we'll show that off to our viewers. This is the device that controls our uh, our different functions on the RV. Uh, Don, you want to tell the viewers a little bit about it? Well, it goes into a few things. It'll have the, uh, of course, the awning and um, the generator start if it has a generator on board. Your leveling, lighting, and uh, the monitor panels for all your tanks. Um, it also is a Wi-Fi hub. Um, so when you're set up in a park that has the Wi-Fi, you use the you use the unit for a Wi-Fi hub and also adjust all your slide outs. It does a, it does a wonderful job, and there's also an app that goes on your phone with that system and works with that. I love it. You know, I uh, 
I have a smart type car. I, I drive a uh, all electric uh, Chevy Spark, and uh, it is a connected vehicle. Uh, Chevy's known for its wireless uh, hotspots. You know, I my little electric car. I feel like um, it gives me uh, access to to Pandora. It gives me access to all my music. It gives me access to the internet. And, and it's become something of an expectation of me because it's a vehicle. And, and, right. and it's really exciting to me to see this now uh, roll out into all the RVs. And, but, but it, it kind of, it, it's starting, um, you know, with not every RV, the designer is special. The Jayco designer is special with this My Command Control Center, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a beginning of, of what you're going to see in the future, but Jayco is definitely a leader in all this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I realize at this point we probably uh, could do, an, uh, before we jump into the rest of the walkthrough, we could probably do a nice job of summarizing uh, some of the uh, features and benefits of the, of the designer for our viewers. Uh, how long is this, uh, Coach? So this one's probably running, give or take, right around 39 feet tip to tail. There's, there may be a little bit of adjustment there. They make four different floor plans. Um, the full body paint and the design and everything that the way this is designed. It's got some of the thickest walls in the industry with a double layer. It's got foam outside the aluminum. Um, you'll have to come in and I can show you more about that, but it's the thickest in the industry. It's got and a lot of amazing stuff. It's also got a, a, a leveling system beyond um, what you'll see in the industry. It, it deletes all the all the hydraulic systems and goes full electric with it. It's very quick and it works awesome. It'll lift the unit right off the ground. You can change tires with it. It's fantastic. There's a lot of different things that it works sure. very well. Sure. And uh, what does this, uh, what's the MSRP on a Jayco designer? They range a little over 100,000 on the way, all the way up to 150,000 sure. in that area. Sure, sure. But we'll, it's, it's, we'll make it's, you it's residential, so it's pretty much for a full timer. Sure, sure. And we covered the gross weight momentarily ago, 17,995. Dry weight was a little less than that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why don't we take a look at the uh, uh, front uh, uh, living quarters here, Don. Uh, Jeff, if you want to uh, go in front of me here. You'll need to be near him for the mic. So you can see it has a 39 inch TV in the bedroom and that slides up and down inside the cabinet. It's a really cool feature because you still got all the drawers and everything in front of it. And then it's got day night shades throughout the whole unit by the way. We'll show you those a little bit later but they uh, when the TV's not down or up I should say. But um, those are awesome. It's also got a king size bed. And uh, if you look, they put a high grade um, memory foam mattress in it too. Oh nice. That's a, that's a nice touch. I mean, you got to have, a, there's a lot of things that I can let slide in an RV when I'm out for a weekend, but I've got to have a good sleep. Yeah. And something like this, that's nice. Yeah. I tell people all the time, you know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, you're, you're probably not going to be happy about using it, and this makes a big yeah. difference. Yeah. You also see the big, huge closet up in the front. And, of course, yeah. that's got some shoe storage, some cedar. It's going to nice. come with extra chairs mm -hmm. for the dinette. Cool, nice. Lots of space that, in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a ton of space inside of there. Stack of stacking storage, in, yeah, <laughs> stacking storage back in the corner. Of course, these nice. units come with dual roof air, so you're going to see the intakes and stuff in the exhaust for the air conditioner, but it's going to have a unit for the top and for the bottom. And that, of course, quiets things down. That's one you of the don't big. see the air conditioner drop down into it, so you got a lot less noise involved. Yeah, that's one of the big complaints you hear from people. Yes. Are, you know, trying to sleep with with the noise of the air conditioner in this. Yeah, you nice. can literally run the uh, air conditioner at the bottom of the unit, and it'll still um, put air up in here. And so you won't. You literally, even its quietness, it'll have it even quieter down there. Um, it also has a uh, stackable washer and dryer closet there. <laughs> you can use it for either, of course. Storage or yeah. You can take those shelves out. But it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, pre-plumbed. Yeah. yeah, nice. You'll notice this one has windows on both sides of the bed. That's really important for people. And there's plug-ins next to the bed, too, for, for any kind of devices you might have for sleeping. And that seems to be a big part of an in, in our industry for the live-ins. A lot of people need their devices. Their to plug CPAP in. machines. CPAPs. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we migrate outside and we'll let... Uh, 
we'll let our, our video guy no. uh, uh, get a picture of the living room as he, on the way out. And, and then we'll show off the, out, the exterior of the coach. Thank you very much for the tour of the inside, guys. It was, that was really, really good. Uh, what, what strikes uh, you, Jeff, about the exterior of this beautiful fifth wheel? Well, the look, it, uh, you know, it's, maybe it's a cliche, but it looks more like a luxury uh, Class A motorhome mm -hmm. uh, with the smooth fiberglass skin, the painted uh, finish, painted graphics and all that gives it a very nice uh, high-end look. Plus the, uh, the frameless windows, those have become very popular in the industry. They really clean up the looks of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Jayco has really thought of everything with this uh, fifth wheel, haven't they, Don? Oh, my. The electric awnings, the LED lighting inside of them, exterior TVs, the more ride uh, storage, more ride suspension system, more ride hitch. Um, it's a 4100 series rubberized suspension system and two 8,000 pound axle. Wow. Did, what, did you say the Moore Ride? Yeah, that's called the Moore Ride system. It's basically, if you look at the hitch up there, that's, you can see the brand naming on there. Oh, okay. So it's also in the, it's in the, right there. Um, it's, it's in the suspension system. It's, uh, they're starting to build other parts too, but. Yeah, it's, well, it's also been in the hitch. It's, it, this has the rubber damping. So when you're towing it, you, the, the rubber, on the hit, or the rubber suspension in the hitch helps to absorb some of the shock between the tow vehicle and trailer. Very nice touch. Yeah, it is. Good to help keep everything intact in the trailer and on the truck. One of the one of the really nice features inside this unit, if you look down here, it's actually got a um, compartment for your generator, but it also is a gas um, setup. It's actually got a gas tank from the factory ready to go for all of the. Um, generators. No, it's, it's a it's a unique part of the industry that these guys even chose to do that. Before they were always a propane generator, and you had to use your propane for the fifth wheel um, generator inside of it. This one comes with its own dedicated gas tank, and it's ready to go. All you got to do is add the generator. Wow, nice. Yeah, a lot of them come generator ready, but nowhere near to this degree. Very nice. And uh, did I hear you say, Don, that it has multiplex wiring? Yeah, it's, uh, it's got lots of LED lighting on the exterior of it. You can see it actually built into the gel cap. And you can see that this cap is a painted cap with clear coat on it. And the exterior of the whole unit is all um, automobile style paint with full clear coat on that. It's an awesome setup. Well, folks, I think uh, what we'd like to do is just kind of wrap things up. We've reached our, our time limit today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. If you have any questions about this designer uh, fifth wheel, I'd, I'd invite you to give Mr. Don Mazziotti a call at Guarantee RV Supercenters. Don, what's your phone number? It's 541-520-8236, uh, and I'd love to hear from you. And, we, of course, we'd uh, love it if you would tune in to Rolling On TV with uh, Mr. Jeff Johnston, uh, the host and producer. Thank you. And our, uh, uh, you, if you don't happen to catch our broadcast locally, we do have our, our shows archived on our website at rollingontv.com. And the reason we love to promote our partners and our colleagues is because they've got great, great information for our viewers, and they can help you make your RV decisions uh, or entertain you with uh, all the wonderful things that you can do with your RV. We want to thank you for uh, joining us today with G Live Guarantees live streaming event. We air live every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, thank you, folks, for joining us. God bless. See you next week. <laughs> no, you were here smooth, man. You, you freaked me out. <laughs>